Hello, I'm Dina Stratman, and today we're going to talk about sexism with Emily Engsler. Hi, Emily. Hi, David. Uh, she's a uh, Syracuse women's basketball player, uh, so she has a lot of knowledge about uh, sports, uh, about sports in general. Uh, so, Emily, uh, why do you think women's sport doesn't have as much attention as uh, men's sports? Well, I think the problem is coverage and how we coverage the women's side of things. So when you first go on to ESPN, you probably see there's a there's a men's Duke game next up, you know, or a men's Louisville game next up, and you don't you don't ever see there's a women's Kentucky game against Syracuse and watch it at 8 p.m. I think the way that we portray the men on television is the problem. We we make them dominant. We don't allow for women's sports to take over in articles and in, in newspapers, and it really it kind of makes us a little less than you know. It doesn't give people the knowledge that there's a game on. Go watch it. I, I actually agree with that and like so people would know like just tell about like how long have you been in basketball like and what does basketball mean to you personally? Yeah, I started playing at around seven. You know, I'm, I'm almost 20 years old. I've been playing for 13 years of my life and I've been working really hard to get a scholarship to go to Division One, play basketball here at Syracuse and um, yeah, it's been a long jersey journey but on the way I've experienced much sexism, you know, it's sad but it's kind of what entails with the process, but I've been playing my whole entire life, basically. So, how did you mention that you have experienced sexism? So, how does uh, how have you experienced it personally, and maybe like from your teammates or like from some of your like close like sport athlete, uh, women sport athletes? Like, or did you have you ever like heard like stories and um, like what can you tell people about it? Yeah, I think uh, well, one story that one thing I was put in that stuck with me most of my life was when I was growing up I played in a division called CYO. It was a men's league, but I was about I was from like seven to thirteen years old playing in this. And um it's kinda of minor, but I think this is what this is the reason why sexism is so large today in sports. So I was growing up and I was playing with the boys and you know, as the only woman on the team they would never give me the ball. I would have to earn my points through rebounds, you know, and I would prove myself. I would prove that I could make the shot. I would prove that I could get the rebound, go down the court, make the shot, score, help us win, but I would still not get the ball. And now you have people coming to the games, kids, daughters of parents watching that. And, and it, it really is sad because it makes it look like, wow, she's a girl, so why are we giving her the basketball? She's a girl, she can't do it. Even when I'm proving I can do it, you know, even when you're, you're showing that you can do the skill, you can make the money, whatever the situation is, we're still getting less than. We're not getting the ball, we're not getting the money, you know, when it comes to WBA. So that was a, a thing that stuck with me because I had to grow up doing that. You know, I had to personally experience that and grow up and push through that and get to high school. And, you know, when I started playing with girls, it was like, okay, we're all girls now so we can pass the ball to each other. You know, like it's, it's weird, but as I got older, I started playing with guys and pick up and you know, I, I proved myself more. You know, I could tell that sexism was becoming something less. You know, um, and I would get the ball more as long as I proved myself. Which is sad that we even have to prove ourselves in the first place. But yeah. So um, while while you were going through this time, it's like who was the person you were looking up to? Like who was your kind of like a role model that like inspired you? That were like, oh my gosh, okay, this person made it, you know? Like maybe maybe I can be that, you know? Like what pushed you to like to those times when you felt like, oh, like women are not appreciated enough in sports? Yeah, for sure. Um, growing up at first, it was definitely Brianna Stewart. You know, she's from Syracuse. She played on UConn. Uh, my whole entire, my whole entire life, I looked up to that girl. And then when she got to college, you know, I, I saw her struggle kind of as a freshman, and I was like, okay, I've been there. I know how that feels. And then she sparked out sophomore, junior, senior year. She became one of the best players in the world today. You know, I watched her through her journey as I was in like seventh, eighth grade. I finally get to college, and now I see her as the number one rookie in the country. In the country, you know, the first gold medalist at 22, and she just kept getting better and better, and proving all the people wrong that were hating on her. And it was like, wow, if she can do all that, you know, and still be the best player in the world, still be the best player in the country, why can't I do, you know, just go Division One, you know? It was my first set that I put on myself, but now that I'm at Division One, my uh, next goal was is like, I want to go to the league. I want to be able to do what she does and make other little girls who look up to me do the exact same thing. So since you've been playing like your whole life almost basically, do you think the situation with sexism has improved? Like 
it hasn't hasn't got better like has people like have more noticed uh, like have they are they talking more about it like i feel like social media is actually very active on that like people are actually standing up uh, for from their for their needs and stuff so uh how do you feel it like do you feel it it's getting better or do you still think it's well maybe some part partly well i think sexism still stands but i do think that as i got older it's made a tremendous jump from something really really bad to something that's getting better you know it's improving in the form that women are now having all these role models you know i did some research when i was younger on sue bird and she was one of the first people to be in the WBA. you know she's like 35 years old and um she didn't have many people to look up to because she was in the WBA when it first started so now we're in college right and we have these WBA players to look up to so as the years went and WBA was created now we have people to look up to. So now that we're in the league, little girls will have people to look up to. So that that was the main thing that I thought was necessary, you know, other women that younger girls could look up to. And since we it succeeded in that, it's allowed for sexism to kind of take a break, you know, and like have us look at other women and think, wow, we, I can do this. So let's, you know, let's do it kind of thing. Um, and so the con so this is a very controversial controversial topic like from a men's and women's perspective. So I feel like some men would uh, would have like different opinions about like how we see like we should like um, as basketball players maybe like we should get paid more uh, more equal pay than men. You know, and uh, do you think do you think men would think the same way like that we think or like some men would be like oh no they should not like we do more we do we're we're better we have more friends what do you think about it yeah i think there's both kind of those men in the world um i would hope that male athletes who play the sport and understand the dedication and time it takes to be an athlete would be on our side and the fact that we work just as hard we deserve the same coverage you know media time and availability opportunity to make the same money but i think the problem lies in since we're not creating the same revenue the same money because of media coverage we shouldn't get paid the same money and because those men are bringing in that money they just they think that they deserve to get paid that money and we might not so i think there's some men out there who understand that we do just as much as them and we deserve the same amount of opportunity but then there's sadly some men who think well we might be doing the same thing, but we're making the money and you're not so why should you get paid that, that much money. So yeah, it's definitely a difficult topic, but I do think that a lot of male athletes understand, you know, what we do. We, we, we play the same sport, we, we play, we're both athletes. So hopefully as we get older, you know, um, we can have men more on our side because it might actually help the sexist barriers of little boys who don't see women as the same, you know? Yeah. So like going to like the end of like my like on this interview, like I want to ask you like so you're like division one athlete already like college, you know, like you might go to um yeah, like you're doing really good, so you might go to uh WNBA, you know, like that's uh, that's like everyone's dream, you know. And uh so how do you how do you wanna change the situation? Like how do you think you could like how, how do you think you could be like an influence in this life like for other people who are growing up and uh, on other young girls? As a, as a college athlete now at a Division One level at Syracuse, I think the best thing I can do now in my position, you know, I, I think that I'm a, I'm a well-known athlete for my area, but I'm not in the WNBA, you know, I don't have all those fans at this time, but for now I think the best thing I can do is answer girls dms when they dm me and they're about 12 years old and they ask what can they do to get better you know things like that motivate younger girls who kind of don't have the guidance you know go back home and visit my middle school the girls teams there because i grew up with no no girls teams you know and now I, I went back and now they have girls teams so i can go back do camps you know stuff like that but if i ever do make it to the league or even overseas and i actually have the money you know and the the celebrity status the availability to um, kind of contribute with money and get camps. I would definitely, my goal would be to start camps that are kind of inspirational speaking so that women, girls, can understand that, you know, it's never, it's never unavailable. There's always an opportunity. Just keep working hard. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, like, this was a very good interview, and I, I think that people really will enjoy to watch it. Thank you. Thank you.